Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It will make you love everybody. It will make you love everybody. It will make you love everybody. It's good enough for me. To God be the glory, and welcome to this, your real illuminating moment. I'm O.W. Prince. I feel the need to clear some things up today. Despite what many have said about me, and regardless of what many may believe, I do not hate or despise any individual, whether they be woman or man, boy or girl, fornicator or adulterer, liar or thief, homosexual or heterosexual, drunkard or swindler, prostitute or a violent, vulgar, decadent, profane person. I've loved them all at one time or the other. I could not help but to love them. Some are relatives, even close cousins whom I admire even today. Some are fraternity brothers and sorority sisters and all are professed church-going Christians. I've eaten with many of them and I drank and self-medicated with the best of them. And we all were criminals and outlaws against God. But I'm still close to a lot of them, but our relationship has changed. But our familiar love for each other does not preclude and should not impede my love and faithfulness to God, His loving word, nor my divine obligation to preach and teach what the Lord instructs and reveals through the Holy Spirit. I do not bully others into accepting the holy ways of the Lord, and they don't bully me to go back into transgression and immorality. I respect them, and they respect me, and many know that I've been there for them when others who perpetrated a fraud and pretended to be their partners in crime were absent in the times of their troubles. However, since I've been born again of the water and of the spirit of divine holiness, I hate those who hate God. For the scripture says regarding Yahweh's prophets, O oh God, that you will slay the wicked away from me. Bloodthirsty men who speak of you deceitfully, your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O oh Lord, and detest those who rise against you? We cannot say that we love God and disobey his commandments and be friends with his haters and expect to be friends with the Lord. Jesus makes this plain in Matthew 7, 21 through 23, when he rejects all those who did religious works but did not obey his father's laws. He calls them lawless or criminals, and he dismisses them out of his presence. Read the scriptures. It's in there. Remember that a liar shall not tarry before the Lord. Therefore, although God loves us, he does not tolerate, endorse, nor reward disobedience, which is hatred toward his father, Yahweh. The living word, as recorded in the scriptures that Jesus and his apostles taught out of, says, Cast away from yourselves all the transgressions you have committed, and fashion for yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why should you die, O house of Israel? For I take no pleasure in anyone's death, declares the Lord. So repent and live. Ezekiel 18, 31. And again, the Lord directs the prophets to say to us, As surely as I live, declares the Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that the wicked should turn from his ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. For why should you die, O house of Israel? Ezekiel 33. And the apostles preached out of this word and said, Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolater, nor adulterer, nor men who submit to or perform homosexual acts, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkard, nor verbal abusers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 9-10 and the Lord said, Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Luke 13, 5. God loves all of us. Of that we can be sure. God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, 
Christ died for us. Regardless of our sexual perversions and preferences, fornication, adultery, idolatry, and abusive behavior, and vulgar and profane language, God loves us. And his love is sacrificial, but not compromising. Inclusive, but discriminatory, in that it is for the soul who seeks God diligently to obey him. The Lord insists that his love for us be returned and humbly responded to with humility, repentance, and obedience to his laws and commands, which is love for God. He never equated love for God with love for Christianity, nor love for any religion or church attendance or by singing hymns and so-called gospel songs or through paying tithe into a Christian institution of sincerely confused and deceived liars, false prophets and pulpit performances and shouting and rolling around on the floor. He says, this is love for God, that we obey his commandments and his commandments and Sabbath days are not burdensome. Let me repeat that out of Isaiah 58, 13 and 14 and 1 John and 5. And I summarize, this is love for God, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments and Sabbath days are not burdensome. Although God loves us, and his blood saves our souls, his blood does not apply to all of us. And we are not saved, nor are we made holy, until we humble ourselves, admit that we are wrong, and that God's laws and commandments are holy and righteous in every way, and we repent of transgressing God's law, and diligently seek him and his ways to obey him, and we are accepted by him by the gifting of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2, Acts 10, and Acts 15. So sorry, my friends and relatives who have chosen to stay with your lusts and pleasures and indulgences that God hates. And that's your choice, and I respect that. But unless you repent and follow Jesus in the authentic way of holiness, humility, obedience, and Yahweh's plan of salvation, you will not see the kingdom of God, nor can you truthfully claim to be born again. We can't get around God's divine way of salvation. We cannot make up our own Christian or apostolic or Catholic ways to be saved and worship God. And we are not going to make God accept our Christianity and his pagan ways and idol sun God worshiping Sabbath days and clown preaching and get rich gospels and fornicating congregations. We are not going to make God accept and reward our unfaithful, twisted, perverted, abominable, vile, filthy, unfaithful ways with eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. To even entertain such a thought is insanity and blasphemous. Are you crazy? If you really want to be born again, repent of yourselves your false faith and corrupted belief systems of death, hell, and the grave. Repent of church and religion and sexual immoralities and demonic rituals and demonic doctrines and crosses and pictures and images and statues and figurines and festivals of idol gods and return to the original unchristianized, uncorrupted, unpaganized, unpolluted, pure, and holy living word of God. Humble yourselves and come out from among those things that God hates and from among those wicked folks who God is angry with every day and then he will be your God and then you will be his sons and daughters. Thus saith the Lord. But you will have to leave your carnal sins and perverted lust and disobedience and prideful self-righteousness and demonic darkness and idol Christian gods behind. Nothing but the holy and righteous shall enter the kingdom of God, and you cannot get into heaven based upon your own righteousness, nor upon your own religious practices or rituals. Our very best is that a rag used to clean our feces, or a cloth used to clean a woman's monthly cycle. Nothing good resides in our flesh, and not one man or woman, regardless of their titles, or religion, or position, or wealth, is righteous enough to enter heaven. All are born sinners and have fallen short of the righteousness of God. Amen? All have fallen short of the glory of God. All must have the righteousness of God credited to them through his anointed land. Yes, Jesus loves me, this I know, because his living word tells me so. But everyone, and I mean everyone, must repent and love God in the way that he commands to be loved, not according to church or Christianity or religion or a book or a temple or a mosque, but according to his laws and commandments. We have to love Yahweh in the way of Yahweh. Fear God and keep all of his commandments, for this is the whole duty of mankind and the only true way to love God who first loved us. God has not changed. God does not change. 
God will not change for the sake of Christianity, nor for the sake of our good intentions and sincere hearts and good works. Haven't you heard? God does not repent. It is we who are commanded to repent. And failure to repent is an act of rebellion and disobedience against God. And it doesn't change God one little bit, but it does condemn our souls to hell. Repent! I'm O.W. Prince, and this has been your real illuminating moment. And as always in party, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver him and her out of them all. Life hurts, but God heals. To God be the glory. Thank you, God. Keep looking up.